I'm Aaron Maté sitting in for Jimmy Dore here with Americans comedian Kurt Metzger. And here is the headline in the Times of London. U.S. bombed Nord Stream gas pipelines, claims investigative journalist Seymour Hirsch. Yeah, Seymour Hirsch, one of the most accomplished journalists of all time, recently came out with a report. We've covered it here extensively on the Jimmy Dore Show. Detailing how the U.S. blew up the Nord Stream 2 pipeline. And Cy Hirsch exposed the details, how this was planned on the orders of President Biden and executed with the help of Norway. And outlets like the Times of London uh, are covering this. But in the U.S., it's a much different story. U.S. outlets uh, are pretty much doing their best to ignore Seymour Hirsch's reporting. And this is confirmed in some new reporting from Alan McLeod is with Mint Press News, and here it is. An investigation into the 20 most influential U.S. news outlets found that virtually all of them have completely ignored a star journalist bombshell report claiming the Biden administration blew up the Nord Stream pipeline. Yes, Seymour Hirsch, one of the most accomplished, impactful journalists of all time, won the Pulitzer Award and many other accolades. His stories have made history. Uh, the My Lai Massacre, which he exposed, uh, this massacre of Vietnamese civilians, him revealing that and the cover-up that occurred, that helped end the Vietnam War. Now, he also exposed the Abu Ghraib torture scandal and story after story uh, exposing the national security state and having a huge impact on the world. But now, Cy Hirsch, after uh, a brief hiatus, has come back with this huge story that the U.S. blew up the Nord Stream 2 pipeline and he's getting cr uh, crickets from the establishment media in the U.S., so here's more from Alan McLeod. Studying a week's worth of news from the top 20 largest U.S. media outlets found only full four total stories on Cy Hirsch's reporting, including five minutes of TV, one tiny report, and one blistering attack piece calling Hirsch a discredited journalist who just gave a gift to Putin. And that was in the uh, uh, Business Insider, which – had the, the gall, worst, had the bit, gall to yeah. call Seymour Hirsch discredited, one of the most accomplished and legendary journalists ever. Wait, don't they do that with a bunch of people? That's yes, what they, they do. do. That's what they do. Yeah, we covered it uh, on uh, the Jimmy Dore show, how they – and their effort to smear Hirsch was based on Bellingcat, which is a NATO state-funded website, which, of course, Insider failed to mention. And by the way, as we talked about, Bellingcat's own state partners in the UK have privately called them in leaked documents – somewhat discredited. So it's funny that they cite Be uh, Bellingcat to try to call Seymour Hirsch, one of the best journalists ever, discredited. Well, also look at like, okay, he's discredited, then how did he give a gift to Putin if, his, <laughs> exactly. if he's worthy, <laughs> worth anything? That's a good point. Alan McLeod, this is incredible because fallout from Hirsch's article is all over the news wires. Reuters has 14 articles on it. So Reuters is an international news service, which every major outlet is subscribed to. And so these outlets get Reuters reports, 14 reports about Seymour Hersh's story, but none of them have picked it up. And Alan says, this means that every newsroom in the U.S. has been bombarded with a story for days and virtually everyone has repeatedly refused to acknowledge its existence. That's exactly right. And more from Alan McLeod's reporting here, a survey of U.S. news coverage or lack of U.S. news coverage of Cy Hersh's Cy Hirsch's story, the entirety of the corporate media's attention given to the story consisted of a 166-word mini-report in Bloomberg, one five-minute segment on Tucker Carlson Tonight. I was in that segment. Uh, one 600-word roundup in the New York Post, a shrill Business Insider attack article whose headline labels Hirsch a discredited journalist that has given a gift to Putin. The 20 outlets studied are in alphabetical order, ABC News, Bloomberg, Business Insider, BuzzFeed, CBS, CNBC, CNN, Forbes, Fox News, Huffington Post, MSNBC, NBC News, New York Post, New York Times, NPR, People Magazine, Politico, USA Today, The Wall Street Journal, The Washington Post. Look how many of these outlets have completely ignored the story, including The New York Times, which formerly employed Cy Hirsch, where he did some of his most legendary reporting. But not everyone's ignoring it. And here's Claire Daly. She's a member of parliament in the uh, European parliament. She's from Ireland. And here she is talking about the world turning its back or some of the world turning its back on Cy Hirsch's reporting, especially establishment media in Europe and the U.S. Since September, the lack of interest in finding answers to who was behind the Nord Stream gas explosion has been, frankly, astounding. This was an act of sabotage, an act of unrivaled va vandalism economically and environmentally, and not a word, no discussion, 
no questions. Then along comes Seymour Hirsch, the world's most acclaimed, distinguished, living investigative journalist. He produces a detailed claim that the United States executed this explosion with the help of Norway. Planned months before the invasion, a Norwegian Navy P-8 surveillance plane dropped a sonar buoy on the 26th of September, which triggered explosions planted by US Navy Panama City divers three months earlier under a NATO exercise, and still nothing. I don't know what happened, but I want to know. This is a man who doesn't make claims lightly, a man with contacts, and I find it frankly jaw-dropping that the EU is not asking questions as to who is responsible for sabotaging the livelihoods of our citizens. I am ashamed to be a European. So what this bombing of the Nord Stream 2 did is it cut off a huge source of cheap energy, not just for Germany, but for all of Europe, because the Nord Stream 2 was built to bring cheap Russian energy from Russia to Germany and then the rest of Europe. And it was basically by using cheap Russian energy that Germany has been able to build such a powerful economy, which now has been severely hurt by the proxy war in Ukraine and by the destruction of the Nord Stream 2. And what Cy Hirsch points out in his article is that the U.S. recognized that if the Nord Stream 2 went online, then that would create a big problem for the U.S. if it wanted to wage a proxy war uh, against Russia and Ukraine because to do that proxy war, they need Germany. And Germany is not going to want to be on board with that, or at least it's going to have jitters about being on board if it has <laughs> it, its cheap energy coming from Russia. So the U.S. took care of that by blowing up the Nord Stream 2. Well, you're welcome, Germany. <laughs> exactly. Is that – so yeah. – she said they planted the, the article said they planted the explosives before the invasion even happened. Is that what did I hear that? They wrong? started planning, but what they started planning this before the invasion. No, no, but the buoy did I hear this? I might have heard this wrong. It sounded like the explosion, uh, the explosives were planted during a Navy exercise, the Panama City divers. Was that before it was after that was in June oh, 2022? Oh, okay, but the planning for this operation began before the invasion. And actually, the planning really got underway in December 2021. And that's really interesting timing because that same month, Russia submitted these detailed draft treaties to the US and NATO, outlining all of its concerns that could resolve its issues over Ukraine and end the crisis and uh, yeah, but we don't prevent a war. That. Why? But the US and NATO didn't want that. And that Russian treaty, those, uh, those proposals and those treaties, basically asked the US and NATO to recognize uh, Russia's security concerns in Ukraine by pledging to keep Ukraine neutral so Ukraine wouldn't join NATO. And also, it asked the U.S. NATO to roll back to some of the offensive military infrastructure that are in states that surround Russia. Not all the infrastructure in these in these states, but just some of them. The, the states that joined NATO after 1997, which include states that formerly were a part of the Soviet Union. So Russia was asking NATO to scale that back. And rather than even discuss that, even talk about it, let alone accept it, just discuss it. The U.S. instead started planning for blowing up the Nord Stream 2 and basically wanted, I think, this invasion to happen so they could in turn wage a proxy war. And just to make sure everybody was on board, they took care of the German factor by blowing up the Nord Stream 2. And now, since then, the U.S. media has not been willing to ask any questions. And even when one of the most celebrated journalists of all time comes out with this story, they still don't want to pay attention to it. Well, I like how Business, in like Bill business Insider... I thought they had lost all their credibility back when they did the Barstool Sports Guy smear. Mm, that was that. That's okay. when they got blown up. Like, so it's amazing to talk about somebody. Who, or who's uh, what's the guy that we're uh, the last time we were watching the? Uh, he was from the CIA. Now he's at the State Department. Oh, Ned Price. Yeah. Ned Price. Like watching him talk as if like he has a track record of. <laughs> the yeah. guy who stole the truth the whole time. Now he's discredited, and you who have lied every single time. That's amazing. That's how it works. Doing live stand-up comedy in Tempe, Palm Springs, Milwaukee, Nashville, Northampton, Massachusetts, Syracuse, Coho's, New York, and Hartford, Connecticut. Go to JimmyDoor.com for a link for tickets and become a premium member. Get access to all our content.